Hi, this is Phil Jelena. I'm your ringmaster for the Beat the Crap Out of Cancer event coming up on November 9th, 2013. This event will be taking place at the Combat Arts Training Academy, and Joey de los Rios has assured us that the red carpet is in. We'll be holding similar events in Los Angeles, England, and in Indiana to make sure this is an internationally recognized and approved event. This is going to be full contact stick fighting and other weapon fighting. Hopefully you'll come out and support us because we're going to be having Dog Brothers coming up from Los Angeles, Mexico, Pennsylvania, Texas, and locally from Toronto and from Vancouver and from Montreal and from Ottawa. We have people coming from all over and we're fully committed to beat the crap out of cancer. We need your money. So you can do this a lot of ways. You can go online. Facebook has a Beat the Crap Out of Cancer page and you can commit some money to our cause. We hope we can see you there. We're there for you. Thank you. Good day, everybody. Welcome to FMA discussion. This is episode 353, and tonight we're going to be covering Beat the Crap Out of Cancer. So this is an event that um, I think is just incredible what these guys are doing. They raise money basically for cancer victims. Um, so it's a great cause. Uh, these folks get together, and I'm going to let them speak on how they how it came about, kind of what the guidelines and rules are better to speak on than me. But I will say I just attended one, and and I absolutely loved it. I just, I love the energy, the lack of egos. You get to talk to, you know, different folks, their background. I just thought it was just incredible, incredible. So my guests tonight are going to be, these hooligans are going to be, uh, we got Matt Berry, we got Jeff Abelito, and we've got Nick Merchant. I'm going to be bringing them up right now. Where's Nick? There he is. I'm here. Hey guys, thank you for coming on. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Right. Good man. Thank you for having us here. Oh my pleasure. I'm just I'm happy this is uh, happening. I wanted to, I wanted to do it sooner than later just to kind of piggyback off the energy, and I didn't want to wait till like after the holidays. And hey, by the way, we're, you know, so I really wanted to do this sooner, and I'm just glad we were able to make it happen. So, um, you guys kind of heard the intro and such so um before we get started though just so the folks who get, perhaps maybe don't know i figured you guys could give a brief intro as far as your martial arts background so let's go uh kind of uh, clockwise and then like i mentioned during the test run we'll switch the uh questions up so uh matt so uh uh just trying to your martial arts background uh my name is matt barry i am um foxhound of the dog brothers um I train Kali, uh, do Pekiti Tarsha Kali uh, under Green Mountain Dog, um, Pat Gagnon. I also have trained um, Krabi Krabong under Pat. Uh, he's Sled Dog's lineage, as you just saw. Phil Jolina is Sled Dog, and um, as well as uh, <clears throat> Loki Jorgensen, who's Tricky Dog. So, um, you know, that's sort of the more traditional side of my martial arts training. Also done a good deal of dog brother martial arts, uh, training with a gentleman named Joe Dix, certified under Crafty Dog. Um, and then I've trained um, Muay Thai for years under a bunch of different teachers, There's awesome teachers out here. Uh, Pete Fontaine's my main coach, but um, uh, Mark Meltzer was my first coach, and then when I was living in California, I trained under Malapet Sasaprapa, and then my jiu-jitsu coach here, Nate Morrison, is um, uh, a brown belt under Travis Stevens, and uh, also a gentleman named Jay Jack up in Portland, who's sort of a New England regional uh, legend. Um, so, you know, we've got some, some decent regular martial arts, and then I'm also a Libre fighting practitioner but i've been fighting in the dog brothers for 12 years um i became a full dog brother in 2016 and uh that's sort of sort of what i do that's what drives 
all, almost all of my training. I mean, the idea of walking as a warrior for all your days is part of being a dog brother. So, um, you know, makes sense to, to train broadly, but it also makes sense to train broadly for the fact that that's kind of how a, a, a full contact stick fight goes down. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Nick, who is no stranger to this show with uh, you know celebrity status and recap terrorist, <laughs> but um, I'm Nick Merchant, uh, primarily uh, practitioner of Kabbalah Samrata Eskrima. First started off with uh, Master Jeff Finder, and uh, you like that man, don't you? <laughs> and um, worked under uh, Master Jeff yeah, Bond. I like it a lot. <laughs> Ron Saturno, and of course, the wonderful Grandmaster Vincent uh, Cabales, who is probably checking in very soon. Uh, I've studied Dosi Paris under uh, Master Sonny Mayo, and uh, trained, uh, I've had the pleasure to train with uh, Henry Espera once, and uh, worked with Grandmaster Nick Elizar of Nickel Stick Valintawak. I uh, started off doing um, Krav Maga, and switched over to Muay Thai, and uh, through Defender Dog and Foxhound, I drank the Kool-Aid and jumped uh, feet first into the uh, Dog Brothers waters where I've been uh, active in the open since uh, 2019. Nice, nice, yeah, awesome. awesome. And last but not least, Jeff. Hey guys, uh, Jeff, Jeff Apolito. I'm a candidate dog brother of the Buffalo Dog. Um, I currently am instructor at uh, Wakan Guru and Kiti Jirshikali under uh, Patrick Gagnon. Um, I've trained a lot with everyone from Leo Gage to um, uh, a bunch of other people under the Bikini flag. I'm also an instructor in Kribi Kerbong through the Bode Sun Sword Fighting Institute of Thailand. Um, purple Belt and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Professor Phil Myers. And I also train uh, at Matt with Ed Inviticus under Nate Morrison uh, with uh, Team Fuji. So I get to go there a lot as a Purple Belt. And I teach and train uh, Muay Thai at Combat Sports Boston. Uh, specializing in mostly the fair tech system, but we we spread the knowledge around a lot. A little split between the sitio tongue and the fair tech system. Um, started training martial arts when I was young. My dad was a cop, and kind of got me into it. I've uh, done everything from boxing to kung fu to karate, uh, but really my passion has really been the Thai fighting arts, uh, Pikiti, Lakali, and then Dog Brothers, because that's that's where it all comes together. Like at the end of the day, it's like you can train all these individually, but at some point, you need to put this all together and have some resisting opponents. So the gatherings are where it's at. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that was awesome, awesome. Uh, I've answered all you guys. Uh, all right, so um, I guess, you know, what can, let's, you know, individually. So let's uh, let's reverse the order here. Let's, uh, um, Nick, so uh, just briefly, what the kind of, um, what led you to beat the crap out of cancer? Um, you know, historically, you know, when did you do it and how'd you, how'd you get there? Um, so I started training with uh, Defender Dog Steve Sachs, who basically, you know, was, was my, my mentor and guide into, into the full contact fighting waters. Uh, there was the infamous dojo storming in which uh, several of the dog brothers showed up uh, at Sonny Mayo's gym and uh, I just knew something was missing. And I, I enjoyed the chaos and, and horror of full contact fighting and, and embraced it immediately and, uh, you know, beat the crap out of cancer. I think it was 2017 or 2018 was the first one I had went to, which was my first real foray into fighting people I didn't train with. And, um, you know, it, 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 and we'll get to that later. It was just something that was dear to my heart, the whole cause. But, uh, yeah, it was up in Vermont. Uh, what was the name of the gym, Matt? Uh, combat art. Ah, fuck. fuck. Combat art. Or it's combat fitness. Combat fitness. You know, it's, it's a semi-generic name, which sounds terrible. I uh, The guys up there, I love. I actually just did a kickboxing match in that gym like two months ago. <laughs> um, uh, combat fitness, I think. But uh, Anthony and Vincent... Uh, the owners up there are just super awesome dudes, uh, and they hosted Beat the Crap Out of Cancer for a couple of years yeah. um, out of there. There's uh, Vermont's got some weird, Vermont's got some weird issues now with um, doing uh, full contact fighting or just insurance yeah. stuff. The state state gets their grubby fingers into it. So the last couple of years, we've 
done it in we did one in Boston last year and then New York. So sorry, sort of cut you off, Nick. Keep, no, no, keep no, no. I, I asked you the questions. I mean, that's fine. But yeah, that's where I got my start in it back then. Okay. Okay. Um Matt, same question. I have done I think uh, this year was like the 13th yeah, beat the crap out of cancer. I've done quite a few of them starting with, I think I started the third, my first year of stick fighting was the first year or the second year of beat the crap out of cancer. And I had just annihilated this part of my hand like a month before and I couldn't hold a stick with my right hand. Um, so I couldn't do the first one. Second one, I had taken an aluminum trainer directly into the ear, uh, which, uh, split my conch, my ear canal and broke my TMJ. So I was recovering from that. But that third year I got a shot at it and it was a good time. Uh, I took a bus to Toronto, actually, uh, the bus from Boston to Toronto to Toronto is like 19 hours, depending on, Ooh. you know, how it yeah, because it's like, I don't know, like 10 to 12 hour drive, something like that. If you just go straight, you're on a bus. So it's like, oh, over here, stop. Yeah. Oh, over here, stop. I oh, get off the bus now. I yeah, go on the bus. hours. So, oh, my God. Be yeah, it was, a long one. it was a long one. So I did, I did a few of those. Um, some of my big brothers within Dog Brothers um, are out of Toronto. Uh, I believe you're going to be speaking to Growling Dog in fairly shortly, uh, Rene Kokolo. Yeah, who, I can't uh, wait for that one. Okay. Lurking in the chat over there somewhere. Oh, there um, he is. <laughs> maybe you know, uh, as well as Wandering Dog and and you know the some Canada, the Canadians were closer to me as a, a northeasterner um, than than even the LA guys were at one point, especially early on for me because, you know, those who was, those who was around. Yeah, uh, geographically like Jeff, speaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Jeff mentioned um, we have that mutual teacher, Pat Ganya, we say it differently, but um, he, you know, he sort of provided a bridge for me particularly because he came through training with those guys, both uh, on the West Coast with the Vancouver crew and then the, you know, Toronto, Montreal, kind of kind of groups so um yeah I just, like I already had that connection to those guys immediately and I was just trying to fight man like when um uh, I mean even now uh, I, I'm looking for a stick fight anytime I can get one like it's like this weekend next weekend okay cool let's do this so when there was an additional event and available on the kind of east coast I was I was on immediately. Um, and it also immediately resonated with me because one of the one of the other main influences for me in my early days as a dog brother was a gentleman named uh, Howie Mandel, uh, which I know sounds like Howie Mandel, the actor, but it's a different guy. Um, Howie was uh, one of the people that took me under wing immediately when I arrived and he passed away in. I think. Uh, winter of 2013 or spring of 2014 i think but it uh it, he had colon cancer and he refused any kind of treatment they told me he had about six months to live you know maybe stretch it out a little bit with chemo and he goes no nope, not going to do that and he lived about three and a half years longer than they told him to uh, i met him after he was supposed to be dead uh, at a dog brother gathering where he fought which like you know you're you're already on well and borrowed time and you're like you know what i might as well do yeah, go fight some that motherfucker. so um anyway uh howie's influence had something to do with me jumping right in to beat the crap out of cancer as well as um you know my my mom is a cancer survivor and of other you know i i, I don't know anybody that doesn't know somebody in their One life that's affected by cancer. So our uh our connection to this event, especially through Dog Brothers, is you know, it's it's pretty thick at this point. Okay. Yeah. And uh Jeff. Uh, I got in to beat the crap uh pretty much kind of same as Matt through uh, actually I two dog brothers that I came up with, Greg Brown, Cyborg Dog, and then uh Pat, uh Green Mountain Dog. Uh, they were like, well, we're doing these events and it's kind of a good event to go to, to get your feet wet before you go to a gathering. 
Um, and it just seemed to be like a really great, you know, notion, you know, especially I, my stepfather passed away from cancer years ago. And uh, just the notion of what we do, like we don't train what we train because, you know, for, for fame, for glory, there's no trophies, there's no medals. We do what we do to defend our homestead. Like this is life or death. So it's kind of, you know, I would say poetic, but, you know, to get into this, to get involved in this, because this is why we train what we train mm -hmm. is for the betterment of life. So it seemed to be pretty appropriate uh, for me to be like, yeah, let's start with beat the crap out of cancer. Like, let's start the, the path there. That just seemed to be very poetic uh, and just a great cause all in all. Uh, and, and, not, and not just for the, the stepping stone of going to a gathering, but just kind of like, this is kind of this place where I'd like to start. Mm -hmm. This path, it seems to be kind of fitting, like really doing something for the betterment of people that, you know, you can't fight your way out of cancer. You can, but you can, you can stick fight your way out of cancer. That'd be nice. But it was, uh, this kind of seemed an appropriate stepping stone, a place for me to start this, this journey, this path. Uh, so that's that's how I got into it. And that's why yeah, I just thought it was a great, you know, synonym to what we do as Filipino martial artists. Absolutely. And I'm a little disappointed myself. I didn't, um, I don't know if I just didn't see events. Me and Nick have just recently met. Um, you know, I would I would like to say I would gone it, but um, could have would have should I guess. But um, yeah, but uh, anyway, we got some folks. We got Henry. We got Nick. Nick Merchant is also <laughs> commenting in there. We got Min. And we got uh, Renee, the man himself. We got Brett. We got Justin. Any Coach Danny who's traveling the world or America, I should say. And we got Dan Terry. All right. So here, here's so Stas Cole. Uh, um, I know COVID obviously throwing throwing a wrench and everything. Um, so where are the current status quo, current locations of uh, beat the crap out of cancer? So Matt, where are the current locations? Cons consistent right now. We have uh, you know LA uh, is a big one. Um, there's generally a uh, northeastern Canada uh, thing. Renee can fill you a little bit, uh, fill you in a little bit more. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still he's still got his greasy fingers in the background of things. But um, you know, there's there's an East Coast kind of thing, uh, Chicago area. Um, there's a sort of Pacific Northwest Vancouver thing usually. Obviously, LA. Uh, in other years, there's been um, one in England, and I think there was even one in Japan one year. There was, but, there was a, one in Japan one year. Yeah. Oh, wow. So okay. there's, you know, from year to year, our location this year donated to uh, Classic McQueen. Oh, rock his shirt. Michael McQueen is a gentleman who is actually going through chemo and stuff right now. He's a, a really great dude. Um, if you're um, on Instagram and I'll look him up classic McQueen with an underscore at the end uh, he is um, he's a he's a martial artist jujitsu jujitsu practitioner um, as well as uh, kind of a blade arts guy but um, he's also a traveling guy he travels around the world and uh, he's a photographer a writer and uh, he shares travel like safety tips and and hacks and things on, you know, if you're going to different places and there's been a lot of things that I've picked up from him that have sort of given me this connection. And, uh, you know, I felt like this year after last year, us having donated to St. Jude's, which is a great organization, it made sense to go directly to a person who was um, going through things. It's, it's late stage throat cancer. So it's kind of a big deal for him. So being able to support him a bit financially is, you know, pretty pretty good uh, from a direct point of view. You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to give to a big, you know, non-entity entity, but to know that someone who's going through it is going to get- Yeah, they're getting all the money. It's not- perfect. Yeah, that was pretty cool. There's no overhead. You know, there's no overhead. And he's got a pretty big, if you're interested in, uh, in you know, helping this guy out, even if it's a couple of bucks, there's a link in my bio. Um, on Instagram, you know, find me. We'll, if you we'll get there. if you um, think of it and remember, if you send it to me, um, I can post in the comment section here, post interview, cool. and put it in. That'd, be, that'd be awesome because that's you know this year that was what it was about, man. It was, yeah, was getting, getting some help to, to Micah. Um, yeah, send it to me. I'll post it in the group 
and as well yeah no um so all right so we're gonna get so far as the um and then yeah definitely when i get renee on here i'm gonna let him go into all the particular yeah as far as yeah, that. yeah he you know he's he's instrumental in in this whole thing and yeah. um i uh i would like to yeah see he's got things to say you can't show yeah. him up yeah, yeah. Get him on, and i'm actually hoping down that. there in the chat and we that's uh the big boy i i you know I tried to get him to give me some prompts, actually, and he and he didn't, which I'm surprised. Which just means you're gonna have to hear it all. That's okay. So. Yeah, yeah. He's coming on. I'm, I'm hoping to get him on next week, actually. Um, yeah, oh, we've, been, uh, we've been uh, chatting it up a bit as of late. So it seems like he's a great guy. So, um, but uh, I just on that much. Yeah. <laughs> so all right. So right, just before we t go into the inf the dog bird influence, all that. So um, I know we um obviously you guys got levels like um um dog candidate if i'm not you guys are obviously gonna correct me but uh so like what what are the um what are your levels nick nick what are you no i'm i'm just a dog i'm, I'm entry level i'm a guy in a cubicle <laughs> <laughs> when they throw you a biscuit once in a while <laughs> I guess I, i'm still waiting on my biscuit <laughs> so there go so it goes so it goes what? Dog, dog candidate? Dog to candidate to full dog brother. And the amount of time, the number of gatherings, the, the, these things are kind of subjective. Um, but uh, with like what you have kind of, you know, displayed before you here is I'm a full dog brother. Uh, Jeff is a candidate and, and Nick is a dog, and well, that's all right. That worked um, out tonight without being planned. <laughs> yeah, no, no, something that wasn't. Um, anyway, uh, the journey is really different for every single person. There's no, there's no two guys that I know that are full dog brothers that came to this the same way, and and the the rules for ascension promotion are they can be fluid depending on the situation but um for the most part i would say a person who is at the rank of dog has done about three gatherings minimum um and is showing the right fighting spirit in general you know you you don't have to be a world beater to to show up there but you could have i mean nick has just to make it like a, a short thing, uh, the Dojo Storm event that Nick referred to, I was a part of, and I was the first person that, that he fought. Nick Nick has jumped into this situation with both feet without abandoning his art, which is something that I um, respect, right? Admire, I admire and respect to an incredible degree because I feel like the zeal of the convert is something that can really wreck your your base. And uh, it's, despite telling him he should use sticks longer than this, he he won't stop. That's and, why we love Nick, man. He just let tell you. He just goes in there, man, from Piper, and he's just gonna, man. He's just gonna see how yeah. it works. And he's just gonna push it, man. That's why I love this guy. He doesn't care what people think. He doesn't care what people say. He's just gonna go out and do it, man. So yeah. that's respect, man. That's, <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah. So, yeah. but that's uh, the kind. That's, Oh, sorry. That's the kind no, of guy no, that no. we're looking for as a dog. Uh, okay. Jeff, Jeff has been involved for, I don't know, I've known Jeff for almost 10 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it was about a decade. Um, and, uh, you know, you fought in almost every Canadian gathering. Um, and and you fought in the, yeah, you fought in the tribal in LA. Like, you know, that's what... A candidate, a candidate's been around. A candidate dog has uh, fought a lot of gatherings. Has uh, they have a, their eye on you know the next level? Um, you're expecting things out of that guy that uh, you know they might not necessarily even expect out of themselves. And and that's where, excuse me, that's where you choose your name. 
So, or, or a name is chosen for you. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, you don't always get a choice. If you get a choice, it's you're a having a good day. It's a little <laughs> fluid. You might get to choose your name. You might not be choosing your name. Someone else might be choosing your name. Or you might not know. Um, Foxhound for me has a bunch of a bunch of things involved in it. So it's been my name since before. I, I never said it out loud to anyone until the day that you know it was bestowed on me but there's other guys that as soon as they show up we're like oh we know it. we're calling you buddy um, so, you know nick just how it be, is nick will be rapping dog nick will be like rapping piping dog or something <laughs> i don't know i don't know i haven't you know we haven't talked about that yet that's um, funny. So, so here, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. So, so Jeff, yeah. your dog candidate, but do you have like so you don't you don't have an actual dog name? You don't oh yeah, one associated oh, with candidate. The buffalo do? dog. All right, so you do get one associated with candidate. I got you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, in particular, it, it tends to be my lineage because I came from Pat Guignon and Pat came from uh, Phil Galinas. Phil decided to be sled dog because he's in Canada, and then. Mm -hmm. Pat came under him and he's like, well, I'll be Green Mountain Dog, so I'm from Vermont. And I'm like, well, I'm from the Rochester, Buffalo area, so Buffalo Dog. And it just seemed to be that that lineage, but it's not. That's just, that's just kind of how it came to be for me. It just seemed to make the most sense. Um, but I mean, for everyone, it's, it's different. I mean, Matt has his, Renee, I'm sure will get on and tell you all about his, uh, how he came about getting growling dog, but yeah, it's all you, it's unique. I mean, that's the great thing about the dog brothers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah there's no one path. There's no like, there's no formula that says you have to be this name or that name. It's, it's, it's completely organic how it comes about. Okay, so my next question is, all right. So after three gatherings, your dog. What is the transition from dog? Uh, and again, I, I'm not nothing specific. I know it varies, of course, but generally speaking, what is the transition from dog to dog Canada? So, Matt, what's the transition from dog to dog Canada? Uh, dog to dog to candidate is usually you're beginning to see um, a progression in that person as a fighter. So, when you've got a guy who's dog, they're showing spirit. Maybe they're showing skill as well. I mean, there's guys that there there are guys that show up able to kick ass. It's just yeah. that happens. You know what I mean? But there's guys that show up that are not able to kick ass that we would like to teach to kick ass. And so those guys, you know, you you watch someone come up from like, oh, you know, you have some good pattern drills. You can Sinawali, you can mm -hmm. you can Sombrata, you've got some, you know, Palasut, whatever. But oh, how how good is all that when the other person's like, no, I'm um, not out. going to participate. In fact, I'm going to stay away from you a little bit and um, you know play play some games that are not part of the normal game. Um, what you see at that point is okay. How are you starting to manage distance? How are you starting to manage the pressure coming on you? How is your composure in in either of those situations? Um, how is your power? Uh, fighting with a sword is not something almost anyone in this world has done. Doesn't matter if you've like practiced it, like, you know, Kendo or Hema or whatever. I don't give a shit. Not many people have fought with a sword. Some, maybe, you know, maybe, but mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of stick fights and, and I'm basically paraphrasing lonely dog right now. And I'm not saying anything that's, um, got anything to do with me it's like i don't know that much about that what i do know a lot about is stick fighting and so when it comes to that you know you can begin to evaluate someone's someone's skill set and someone's ability and you go okay this guy he's coming up right and that's the moment when they become a candidate gotcha. you see you see where that's becoming a thing dog brother is where you go okay how do you fight against someone who is better than you? Because there's n nobody, except maybe Lonely Dog, uh, doesn't have anyone that's better than them. You know what I mean? Like, how do you handle the, like, where is your composure when you are completely outclassed? Mm. 
that's hard for some people. You know what I mean? Like the, whether it's ego wise or, or whatever, it's hard, it's hard for some people. Then there's how do you fight when it's a hot, like we're fighting, we are at the same level. This is, this is a, a, like a Ram contest. How do you handle that? That's another sort of segment of it. And then the third part of that is how do you handle somebody that has no business being there with you? How do you handle someone that is a significant level lower than you? <clears throat> Depending on where their journey is in dog brothers, that can mean different things. But when you look at that sort of spectrum of, you know, how do you handle those fights? That's how we judge someone that should be a full dog brother. Oh, and, no, that makes sense. Like, yeah, okay. No, no, I dig it. All right. That, no, that, I remember when I made Canada, there was a guy from the Vancouver and uh, uh, I think it was uh, Chris Gord came up and was like, hey, man, this is this guy's first uh, stick fight. And I said, do you mind going with him to dance for the for his first time? Just FYI, single stick. It's his first time. And it was later that Pat was like, yeah, we do this because we know you can school this guy. Like, no question. That's not what we're looking for. We we don't want to see you go in there and like club this guy like a freaking baby seal. It's like, yeah. it's like know. you know, dial it up a little, find out where his skill is, then maybe push him a little, but don't break him. We want to see that you have that yeah, capability. Awesome. Yeah. And so they, like we didn't tell you that because we we're pretty sure you're a good for candidate. But that was one of the tests that we had to be like, yeah, we want to see that, you know, we know you know how to yeah, fight. Right. So we fight someone who's, you know, you are levels above. And you know, key key thing, don't be a dick. Like that's it. Just don't be addicted to the yeah, guy. You're being on somebody who's, you know, first time yeah. they want to experience it and now they get this negative, you know, because of their experience. You know what I mean? And as opposed to that, like you said, you push you know, push them to the level without freaking just thumping on them. Not yeah. Yeah, that really that resonates with me. I, I dig that. So how long in your case, Jeff, how long did it take you to transition like far as time gap and amount of gatherings from dog to candidate? I think it was two to dog and maybe three or four to candidate. I remember making dog really early. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm dog? Shit, really? I was like, oh, crap. I was like, I didn't expect it. Candidate, I'd been doing it for a while, and um, but I wasn't rushing. Like, I, I was still, when I made Canada, I'm like, oh, I still have things I really need to work on, and I know I need to work on them. Like, I made Canada going, I'm still weak at this. I'm still weak at this other thing. I really want to get put this weapon set. Um, and I, now I'm feeling a lot like now I feel like I'm fine with a candidate. Like I have a couple of weapon sets that I'm, I'm getting known for, like the my sock and single. That's something that like one of the other things that I, I kind of know that I've been told, like uh, Greg actually told me this, Greg Brown. He's like, by the time you're full, you should be kind of known. Like Matt has always been like Buckler Tomahawk. You want to fight? You want to fight with a, a Tomahawk? Go find Matt. You want to fight with a Buckler? Go find Matt. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick shaking his head, going, "No, you can just, come, me. You can just come fight me. You can pick where it is." We'll yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, so I'm trying to make. I'm trying to bring Kirby Kabong. I want more Kirby Kabong. Um, I want to influence that more, more in the get in the dog brothers than it already is. So I'm I'm going for like my sock and single uh single dob uh is my big thing that I'm trying to push a little bit more, especially now that I'm doing a lot more Kirby Kabong. Okay. Um, no, no, no. Be known. Be kind of known for like you're that guy. You want you want it. You want a real fight with somebody. You know, go fight so and so. He's known for that shit. And we got guys that are like, like when I was going out to the gathering in L.A., I wanted a staff fight. Matt was giving me people that I should staff fight with and people I should not staff fight with. Like, you have no staff, fight. Yeah. The staff. Staff is a motherfucker, man. Those are scary things. Four yeah, five. Staff, at you. Those are nasty. He's like, don't fight these two guys. They're murderers with that. He goes. Next gathering, maybe, but your first staff fight? No, 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 don't fight these two guys. They're murderers. Um, so it's, you know, be known for a thing. You know, be that guy to be like, oh, you want to challenge yourself? Go fight this guy with that weapon. Huh, awesome. Find out how much you really know about that weapon set. So, okay, so when you get, okay, so when you get, regardless of the, um, you know, whether it's dog or uh, dog Canada, dog brother, so, uh, so, so Matt, where does that have to be is that only done at a particular place or can that or those acknowledgements or incremental graduation so to speak are okay. they can be done anywhere no okay so uh becoming a dog brother is 
only accessible through fighting and Dog Brothers gatherings. In the U.S., we hold two a year. We have one um, in May, which is a tribal gathering. So tribal is... So all three of us here are in the tribe. Like Nick can show up. Jeff can show up. Doesn't have anything to do with me. They can just go to any of these things that they want. Um, and then in September, we have an open gathering. Anyone can show up. You can show up. Anyone who's listening to this can show up. That's how I started. I just rolled into a gathering by myself and was like, let's do Where's this. That There's more to that. There's, there's more to that, but I just, I signed up, showed up, fought, it was okay. what it was. Um, and, and anyone is welcome to do that. Dog Brothers is for anyone. It's not for everyone. Um, then, uh, you know, from there, there's the European gatherings and the Canadian gatherings. The European gatherings, I think they hold one in July, like one in maybe April, one in July. I don't want to speak about that because I'm not entirely sure, but those are also uh, structured with open and, and tribal. And then in Canada, there's usually one in the summertime. July has been traditional. Um, and then for the first time in 2020, they did one in Vancouver. I don't know if that's going to continue. But uh, so there's there's several gatherings throughout the world that are available every every year. That's the only place to become a dog brother, to get promoted within the actual dog brothers tribe. Dog Brother Martial Arts. Separate. Okay. It's another Separate. thing. Yeah, okay. it's another thing. It's very much related. Um, there's a lot of guys, including myself, uh, that fight in Dog Brothers that use DBMA. Like Jeff has some influence of it from, from training with me. Uh, Nick definitely has some influence from training with Defender Dog. Steve mm -hmm. is, a, is a DBMA guy. He's uh, Steve, I believe, is a black tag. Um, or he might even be a guru, and I don't know. Um, but he, you know, he's a very high level. He's a high level fighter within the Dog Brothers, as well as a um, holding rank within their system. So, uh, yeah. But, but there's no other way, like, to do it. You have to fight. So no, 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 no. I was, I was more curious. Where was yeah. the, the location for both the events that you mentioned? Oh, in the LA. 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 Okay, you gotta go. LA. LA. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You gotta go to LA. So God. Nick, what's up? So here, so you're going out there, man. So uh, quickly, man, let's hear it. So, so, you know, one thing I do want to speak about is, you know, you, you talked about like the, the higher level guy with the guy who you can basically club to death. And I've been that guy, you know, I've, I've, no, no, no. And it's We've all been that guy. I mean, you know, I've, I've gone out there and, you know, I, I, I think, you know, being close with Defender Dog and Foxhound, knowing what the spirit of the Dog Brothers is about, I've, I've picked some fights with some high-level guys, you know, and you, there, there is a bit of that trepidation there, but what they do, and I learned this actually through Foxhound, who absolutely terrorized me my first time fighting him, right? But I, but it was like a good terror because it brought so much out of me. Like, Matt saw, he's like, all right, he's pushing it to here, so I'm going to go here and see if he comes in and, and meets that. And that's what it is. It's not like, oh, I'm going to blast them off the doors. It's, I'm going to be right here. You're going to see my taillights. Can you catch up? And I can say that for any of the full dog brothers that I fought. Um, one of my particular favorites is Catch Dog. Uh, he's trounced me twice, but it's not been to the level that I've seen him against full dog brothers. Like, I've watched him fight full dog brothers, and I'm like, wow. All right, he's, he's working to my level. You know what I mean? But he's pushing me each and every time. So that guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, he kind of ripped us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Chris is one of my best friends in the world. No, <laughs> but that's that's one thing I think if anybody's interested in doing, you know, an open gathering, it's not something where people are looking to 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 just like light and light you up and, and make an example of you. It's really an awesome community. I mean, like, I've grown so close to the guys there. And, you know, it, it's funny. Like, you know, we talk about, you know, the short stick, and I and I represent Surat. And a lot of the guys are like, are you sure about that? But now it's kind of like guys are like, hey, you got an extra one? I'd like to try that, you know? And uh, you, might you might create a trend, man, you know? I don't know about that. But, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's interesting because there's not a guy who is willing to go and do that. I think know? it's fantastic. And, 
yeah. I think it, it's just a great thing. And the reward really comes from, I, and, and, I, and I told this to my buddy Henry, who's a, who's a Serata guy, and he came to the Open in September. I was like, the real reward, I said, is, is the drive home. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, because you're running that movie in your head, and you're learning. Mm. And like, you're like, oh, all that stuff that I practiced, that didn't work. Or, hey, that one thing that I didn't expect to work, Save my ass, you know, and and you have this like, like I said, it's like it's like a like a, what do they call those in football when you watch the films again? Uh, uh, replays. Yeah, the replays in your head, you're 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 going through it, and it's such an amazing learning experience because it's not you standing in front of a mirror, it's not you hitting a Billy or Bob, you know, it's actually against a non-compliant attacker who is looking to, you know, hit you as hard as you're looking to hit them. And, yeah. and it's really putting your stuff out there and seeing what you're about, man. So I, I suggest it, I think, for everybody, except for babies. Except for, <laughs> um, no, that was uh, all, by all of you, well said. Uh, so, um, all right, <clears throat> let's go into, um, all right, Jeff, we'll start with you here. Um, Obviously, the um, beat the crap out of cancer is based on dog brother rules. I'm going to have you and Matt speak on this. So uh, what can you tell the folks um, as far as that goes? Like, were you guys, you know, obviously the two rounds and uh, various weapon combinations, levels, what have you? Um, I mean, we typically have, like, three-ish levels. We have, like, light contact. Uh, we have more, like, which is, I guess, more like like light sparring. Uh, then you have more like full contact, like more like a smoker, like for a Muay Thai smoker, a kickboxing smoker. And then you just got Dog Brothers where make it up. You you know, it's like make up the rules, whatever, however hard you want to go, whatever yeah, rules. you just talk to the person across from you and right. you just, just go. Be like, hey, what do you want to do? Like, all right, no leg locks. I don't know anything. Like, all right, no leg locks. Fine, whatever. You know, I usually skip leg locks because. I'm getting older and I don't want my knees ripped apart. And I'll be like, you yeah, get your, yeah, your ankle. Tell me you got mind. it, and I'll freaking tap. I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's also not just weapons. I'm I've been really excited to see more people going from like jujitsu than maybe trying an MMA round, right? Like yeah. get out of your comfort zone. This is kind of one of the reasons we like beat the crap out of cancer. It's it's supposed to be this fundraising event that's very lighthearted, no egos. So maybe get out of your comfort zone a little. You've been doing some Muay Thai, you know some takedowns and a little jujitsu, try MMA. All right, you've done all that. Maybe try a knife fight because the next evolution for most of the people that I know in the MMA jobs that I hang out is, okay, they do MMA, they've done some MMA fights, they've got, they're good at, they're well-rounded in those aspects. Mm -hmm. Now let's start to talk about a weapon because we all know when you get out on the street, empty hand, you guys are, you know, MMA fighters are going to be kings. But weapons, and I've had just about every MMA fighter in my one gym at combat sports told me at some point, he's like, yeah, I should probably train with you a little bit, right? And they're like, yeah, you should, because mm -hmm. you know how it is now, especially MMA fighters. They know you're not going to be a master at every skill set. You just need mm -hmm. to have an answer. You know, you need to have some takedown defense. And now it's like, well, you need to have a knife defense and some offense. It doesn't have to be 20 years in Filipino martial arts. It might just be 20 classes with me. But have an answer, man. If somebody pulls a knife on you, you got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Have something. So get out of your comfort zone a little, even if it's light contact. We, dude, I don't care. You want to come and do a knife fight with me, light contact? Great. Get out of your shell a little. You know, try something new. You know, try a new skill set to see, like, yeah, how much time do I should I be investing in this now? So I'm, I've been loving to see like more empty hand people come out of their shell a little and try something new. And I'm kind of hoping that that makes us bigger. It's not just Dog Brothers. You know, we I jokingly called it Dog Brothers Light when the first one because it was all weapons it was all weapons guys but it's like oh well but you know it doesn't have to be dog brothers light this can be your first mma smoker you know mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's try it see what i need to work on before i actually sign up for an actual mma fight maybe come to beat the crap do a round or two there and reevaluate in an environment that's safe and friendly and a ton of people are going to give you feedback so that's what i saw when i was there i saw people you know, going outside the box. I mean, obviously, I'm not as sat, you know, no words, but when I'm on the sidelines watching some of the different things folks were doing. Yes, Guillaume, this is uh, regard be that crap out of cancer. So definitely some talk about this. We got uh, Master Renee from Philippines. All right. And 
uh, Nick's guys fan club here. <laughs> um, so anything. Um, <clears throat> Just to talk real quick about out of the comfort zone, it's also yeah. a great way to experiment. Matt and I had a terrible idea that we executed. Um, the blindfold, wonderful yes, idea. I love that. Blindfolded machete match. Brilliant idea. It was, but it was a wonderful idea. It was, it was so bad, it was good because so like we love the TV show C with Jason Momoa. It's all these blind humans fighting and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, really boss. Yes. Ranger <laughs> baby. My weed is good. The sun is warm on my face. My blade is sharp. <laughs> so we were we were gonna we we had talked about. I was like, you know, it'd be great as a blindfold stick match, and I just kind of threw it out there. And Matt's like, well, I'm in, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna ignore a good time. So then we had to kind of hash out like the safety aspect, and so we decided on having spotters. And then when we kind of saw how things were, we're like, all right, we're gonna go to the knock machetes just so nobody goes to the hospital. I wanted to do that too, man. Yeah. Man. And it was just so funny, like, like you know, the video, we we both had, like, things that we took out of the show. You know, Matt was, like, walking with the sweep. I heard him go, check, check. You know? Oh, that was the one I was about. I didn't pick up Okay. It was all from that show. I yeah, but that. certain okay. things, like, Matt did a back roll, and he didn't know I was behind him, but he, I fell into him, and then it just turned into, like, a grapple match. And then, you know, it was, it was something like <clears> – <throat> Would I ever fight blindfolded, like, for my life? Absolutely not. But at least now I kind of have an idea what it's like, you know? And it was a cool place to experiment with that because, you know, Matt and I will hit each other pretty hard, but we also knew, like, you know, we had to focus. It wasn't that big of a deal, but we trust each other. That's the whole thing. And it was, like, able to, like, hey, let's totally go out of our comfort zone. Let's put on Macho Man Randy Savage bandanas over our eyes. Oh, the fences. Madness. That was fun. No, that was entertaining to watch. Wow, definitely. So, um, yeah, I mean, like what Jeff was saying, um, I, 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 yeah, that's what really, you know, when I was watching, because you, know, you know, I just, I was just obviously soaking it all in, you know what I mean? Just, um, and all that. Um, but that's what really, uh, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that really resonated with me. But one of the things that, you know, you grab somebody, you know, just say what you want to do and what have you. And I saw the grapplers go and then I saw some of the other weapon combinations. And it, it was just so exciting. man. I, I just was like, I was digging it. Um, and there I just, um, quite frankly, I just didn't know my place there. <laughs> so I didn't know, um, you know, so, you know, I, you know, I just trying to fit in and see what, you know, see what was going on. Um, but uh, it was it was so much fun. So Matt, as far as the the, um, the dog bar influence, so anything maybe um, you want to add to what Jeff was saying? Um, you know, beat the crap out of cancer is definitely structured very similarly to a dog brothers gathering because of the dog brother influence, and I think. A competition based mindset is good. Uh, I think it's important. I think it's something that, you know, a lot of people that do martial arts should see what it's like to be part of a competition based mindset. But the Dog Brothers style of fighting and the Dog Brothers mentality behind the way that we um, fight allows for a lot more personal expression and it also allows for um a little more modulation of intensity within the same event uh if that makes sense like at your first dog brother gathering you ought to be messing your pants yeah everything should be scary you shouldn't understand what's happening. Like, I, hopefully somebody is being your mentor. But by your second or third, you should start to see, like, oh, okay. Yeah, some of this is really scary because those guys are scary and they're going to fight each other in a scary way. But then you see that same guy fight someone that maybe isn't the same level as him. And it's scaled back a little bit. Um, you know, I don't let a little kid beat me at horse. So I'm not going to let a grown man beat me in a goddamn stick fight. It doesn't matter. But the way that I handle that situation is going to be very different. Um, for example, the, this last beat the cramp out of cancer, you saw me fight with one of the younger guys from New York who's uh, – Next guy, right? Big, no. Oh, oh, no. Byron? 
Byron and I already knew each other. Oh, okay. Somebody <laughs> else. Okay. okay. I, I showed Byron what it's like to make pate inside a human being. Um, <laughs> that's just, you know, he'll be, he was okay. Uh, after a couple of minutes, no, 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 this guy, this, this guy, Ben, he's, he's a younger guy that fights out of the New York dog brothers clan and, and, um, candidate Chi dog and candidate lone wolf pulled me aside and were like, please fight, you know, this guy, he's one of our guys coming up and, um, uh, you know, when, when it's that situation, when you have guys that are already within the structure of a clan that spar every week with guys that are animals, frankly, candidates, if, if you spar with candidates all the time, if, if it makes sense to a jujitsu guy, it's like having a roll of purple belts all the goddamn time. These, these guys are trying to kill you because they have something to prove right now. Like this is the time for them. Mm -hmm. um, so these guys sort of threw this poor kid under the bus to fight me and his first round didn't go awesome for him, but he, you know, really, really threw it all at the wall. But then he challenged me again. <laughs> so after having gone through a fairly unpleasant experience, he came back at the end of the day. Granted, he waited until the very last match of the day when I was kind of tired. And he came out and he said, hey, let's do this again. That's what we're looking for, man. That's who that's who we want to hang out with us is the guy that goes, you know what? You just beat the bag out of me. Let's go again. So um, you know, the, the, the dog brothers mindset is that you don't have to want that to come to even an open gathering, but a beat the crap out of cancer event. We deal with everything up in that spectrum. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, um, yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I, I will, I'm a I will fan. straight up talk to you, by the way. Uh, watching you move around with a knife. I, yeah. I would not want to. I would not want to pick a knife fight with you. <laughs> yeah, I watched. I don't know why it would happen? Like, but I wouldn't want to do it. This man knows how to wield a knife. <laughs> he goes right around a blade. Holy shit! <laughs> Well, coming from you guys, I'm humbled and honored because I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, low key. Um, um, yeah, I mean the knife brings out. Is there anything else that brings out absolute truth in the knife? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just um, I can't have that thing touch me, and I just you know as much as humanly possible. And um, yeah, I mean the consequences obviously are pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so. Um, but again, coming from you guys, because I'm I'm just such a huge fan of you guys, man. I, and uh, like I want to dance with you and Matt, man. But <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have some some preliminary talks before we go. <laughs> you know, we'll, but, we'll do it soon. We'll, we'll do it in Connecticut. We'll do yeah, it in Connecticut. Be, yeah, I mean, I, I like I would yeah. love to try the buckler and all that. I, I definitely want to go outside and try all those things. But I want to do it with the right people. You know what I mean? I don't want to like pick up. You know, somebody from Jim Bob's store, and <laughs> you know, and doesn't know what the hell they're doing. You know, what I mean? and then we'll have two people right. that don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, but uh, that was a cool thing because, like, you know, for me as your student, you know, in Piper, I was able to, you know, spar with you, and it wasn't like mm -hmm. it'd be different if, like, you and I had a class and we kind of sparred after. Like yeah, here, yeah. it was just like, hey, let's have a good time and see what happens. You know, and then you stab me in the back of the head. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I really didn't mean to. Everybody went, oh, I was like, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah, I saw that shot. That was really nice. Really nice. I think you had front row seats to that, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was right there. I was like, oh my God. That was awesome. like a cool thing. Jesus. And then and then my Delicious. students were there. And I'm like, hey, I was like, it's so great that Dean Franco's here. And they're like, yeah, I was like, you should go spar. <laughs> well, I was like, you know, I didn't ask you. You should go spar. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, hey, you know who was really, um, I think you made a post about him, Matt, who I really enjoyed sparring with Stick with. Um, Izzy? Is that his name? Yeah. Name? He's one of these yeah. guys. Oh, man, like I really enjoyed my my session with him, man. He seems like a good guy, man, you know? You had Very a double much. stick. Matt, you did double stick with him, didn't you? Yeah, he was a tough guy. He's, um, 
you know, he was a police detective. He uh, he and I actually kind of connected right off the bat when when I first came in because he recognized uh, something about some of the stickers on my water bottle, and we you know kind of started chopping up a little bit about that. And mm. then uh, I watched him fight a couple of times. I was like, this guy's tough. Sonny Mayo is uh, Alpha Dose Pares out of mm. out of New York City, and that's where uh, you know when Nick and I refer refer to the dojo storm. It wasn't a dojo storm. No, it was I, a it was a friendly it was a friendly invitational event. We'll call it. <laughs> but uh, this just this bad bad motherfucker, Sonny Mayo, uh, invited a bunch of dog brothers to his gym. It was funny. He, we walked. We all walked in. Yeah. You know, we're all like, I, I'm. I was probably the smallest guy in the group. And, uh, you know, I'm 5'10", I'm not a little dude. And and he was like, oh, no, you know, he was all bearded and tattooed up. He was like, oh, the Vikings are here. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you know, that was when that was when I met Nick. And, and um, we, we kind of started to develop this relationship with his gym through that. And, and there's been a couple of other guys that have, you know, sort of poked their heads in. But... Mm. Uh, this guy Izzy, man, he uh, he jumped in with both feet, and and it really is a testament to himself and and to Sonny Mayo, particularly as his teacher, you know, for getting yeah. him ready for that situation. Yeah. Because there's a lot of guys that uh, kind of exist in the traditional Filipino martial arts realm. I'm not trying to start any. Yeah. I'm not trying to start anything, but you know, um, not everyone wants to participate in the other guys version of how we test this stuff and uh for somebody to come from a gym where like they have a good they have a good strong weak half lineage from that gym there's some some Found real it. legitimate guys sunny sunny is a legitimate champion he's created legitimate champions that's mm -hmm. you know i guess if nick has to you know, pretend like that's a thing that matters uh, <laughs> well, as a world fucking well, champion. Uh, uh, allow it. me to interject so, you know. with a little a little expertise. <laughs> Having worked with Sonny and and seeing other weak half fighters, I I, I will gladly do legit. Sonny Mayo's crew is a different level of weak half because they do a lot of hard sparring. And even though they do wear the equipment, they wear it more just to prepare for a tournament. But a lot of times mm -hmm. they are going with just a helmet and gloves and stuff like that. Like I'll go in there and I'll train with them and they know, yeah, Nick's not putting the weak half jacket on. So neither will I. Yeah. So they're not like, you know, shying away from it. And and I think that puts Sonny and his crew uh, uh, on, a, on a different level than a lot of weak half fighters who are just looking to trade points. He does put out like like legit fighters. His guys, he's he's got some tough sons of bitches over there, man. And uh and like Izzy was definitely a testament. Like, like I, he, I knew he was coming, and I was just so excited. And he was like, "Well, I don't." I was like, "Just jump in with the real stick, man." And and he was, he was all in. He was all in. He Good loved. God, it. Man. But, that, but that's a testament to Sonny Mayo's crew and his culture. Like, like <clears> I said, <throat> he's not putting out tappy tappy stuff. You know, even mm -hmm. though he'll teach like Sinawalis, what separates him from I feel. You know, from 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 the original Dose Paris lineage that he had come from, is that he put some more combative aspect to it. So that's why I think guys like Izzy were able to adapt pretty well. Man, yeah. he's got a few other guys chomping at the bit to come in, man. So it was a fun match, man. I I, I like I like that cat. He came to the Piper seminar, didn't he? Nick? Yes, yes, he did. Yeah, I like that cat, man. He's a yeah, that's, that seems like a good guy. And, and um, him and Matt, man, I enjoyed watching that that fight. That I, I thought those guys, man. That was one of the more enjoyable fights I, I remember uh, watching. That was enjoyable. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jeff. So, you know, as far as um, we can, what can you speak on folks coming in and that natural um, challenging of you know dealing with the stress inoculation outside your comfort zone? Um, what, what, what can you say on that for folks that perhaps maybe like when I try to get this one going, Connecticut? Um, how do folks you know like any to deal with that or? embrace it or what have you i mean for me it's 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 all about introspection like it it's I'm, i don't say i'm not a competitive person i've lost probably every competition i've ever been in i'm just not that but then i go to a gathering and that's just, this is where i shine this is what i do because it, for me it's an introspection thing of mm. you know i go there i literally have a list of my double stick here's the stuff i want to work on uh at the end of the fight i don't care if you hit me two to one did any of this work? <laughs> it's like, 
did any of this like have a have a plan to mitigate to, to give you a focus like to give you you know something to focus on other than the obvious shitting your pants stress that you're going to have uh, which is called chatter uh we haven't you know, mark denny has these quotes that he puts out about chatter everyone has this chatter it's that voice in the back of your head that says could you have taken up golf like what are you doing you're gonna be you're gonna get into a full contact weapons fight the fuck is wrong with you Go find a new fucking hobby. You have that chatter in the back of your head that says, this is not right. So I give it something else to look at, and that's introspection. It's like I literally make a list of, I just want to work on this shit today. And I don't fucking care if I get beaten down. Did any of this fucking work at all? Or did I just get shut down? And that way you have a little bit of focus to take away from the stress. It also sets a little bit of a goal for yourself by the end of the day. It's like, not only does it help you get through the day, but it gives you a focus. And helps you focus on the that other thing other than the chatter. I still do it to this day. I'll literally look at my phone where I have my notes and be like, all right, this fight, double stick, here's the stuff I'm working on. Drop the phone, go to fight. Does it work out like that? I'm not going to lie. It doesn't. There's days where I get in, I tap in, I work on the thing. And this guy, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he is. I don't know what he trained. He has fucking got my number from the minute we tap in. And that's a bad two minutes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Which, that's not a good day. <laughs> but, hey, but you learn something on this. You're learning like, well, wait, he shut everything down. What was he doing to shut everything that I did down? Clearly, either he knows my number and he knows the structure and the strategy, or his system just happens to be complementary to what I'm doing, and he's just doing it better. Um, so for me, it's all about introspection. Like, I love, I would say I love getting hit. I mean, you, I think you, you have to kind of enjoy eating a shot or two to enjoy this. Um, but I love it when my stuff works, and I love it a little bit more when it doesn't, because then I get excited, at least at this phase of being a candidate. Like, I get excited when I'm like, wait, that didn't work. Like, I throw this at Matt. Matt just hit me with it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Why didn't that work? Hold on, time. Like, after the match, I'm like, what did you see that you shut that down and then you hit me? Because you mm. clearly saw something. I'm more excited about that at this phase than I am about, did it, can I just kick the crap out of this guy? Or did my shit work? It's when it doesn't work and I get inquisitive. Um, but if you have that mindset of being very introspective about what it is you're doing. And the other thing I'd have to say is purpose. This goes back to what Matt was saying. You get a lot of guys coming in from that competitive sport martial arts mode. Mm. You got to make the shift to be like, you're not winning anything here. The only thing you're going to win is more experience and a yeah, better, right. be a better survivor, be a, you know, be able to survive more after this experience. That's the only thing you're going to win. You're not going to win a gold medal. There's no trophy. There's no trophy or win, right? win loss record. That's all gone. That mindset, that, that's a switch. But come in there with the attitude of what am I going to get out of this? Like tomorrow I'm going to wake up and go, okay, what did I, what did I need to work on? Mm. Uh, you know, that'll help mitigate the fear and give you a path give you a purpose as to why you're doing something as insane as full contact weapons fighting yeah yeah, I guess it is, yeah. The mentoring aspect man and i think that's what you you know that you get when, when you talk about the the introspection but like i call it homework you know like uh yeah like after after I, I i i was entered into the tribe matt pulled me aside and he goes hey now maybe try the longer stick and show what you can do with that. which is a nice way of saying like you know what maybe that's what i should be doing at the next fight um you know and you get compliments and questions from guys that that maybe like like omega dog you know i never spoke to him before until the second open and he just you know he opened up and he goes hey man he goes you're a completely different fighter from the last time i saw you just stop blocking punches with your face and i was like all right cool you know <laughs> don't use face to block with <laughs> that was, that was just broad. but no i think there's that's one of the cool things about when you're there and the guys know uh you know where your heart is at and and what you want to do they'll take it like an interest and give you suggestions not once if somebody said nick put down that short stick they, mm. they would say hey since you're going in with that why don't you think about this you know, right. okay. here's, here's a problem you're going to come across. Maybe you should start thinking about solving it. Okay, you've shown yourself with this weapon. Like, Fender Dog always pushes me to do more double stick because I hate double stick. And he's like, you know, and I'm getting ready to go. He's like, so uh, you're doing a double stick fight, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, you know. Hey, on that note, Nick, when do you guys, uh, when do you meet with him on Saturdays? Uh, Defender Dog and I meet at 7 a.m. 
<laughs> oh crap! That yeah, you're like, I'm at seven a.m. in the morning. I'm so sorry, Jesus. Do you see why I take ten fights like it's nothing? Because <laughs> <laughs> is that the right time you guys meet, Nick? Is is um... uh, well, usually because um, well, he's got stuff he's got to do with his kid and football game and family yeah. stuff. So we usually like to wrap up at about eight. Um, I do run like a self defense program in the Bronx that starts at nine, so I kind of need that leeway. Um, I also used to teach my classes at nine, but depending on his schedule, there's been times where we both called each other like, yo, I'll see you at 8 30. I need an extra like, hour of sleep. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I would love to like come down with you guys. It's just um I just know man seven, that's like uh I would oh, yeah, love to you, tell you like I would make it. But you gotta get to five in the morning, man. But I mean, we could always like, you know, if there's like the way the schedule work, you know, we're we're pretty We'll see how you know we can shift things around and stuff like that. As long as I'm at my class by twelve, that's the one. That Let I'm me know because I'll, I'll I'll take the drive down and train with you guys. It's just seven o'clock. I could just tell you that's good enough. Kind Listen, of fun. you yeah. fight the fender dog at seven o'clock in the morning. The rest of yeah. your week is easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much, go, oh. not much else you can do. I got a that's question real. here. So the air wine. So Chad, do you know uh, Chad Nick? Yes, yes, Chad is Question up. Question for Dean Franco. Thoughts on Kabbalah's Eskrima? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, <clears throat> I actually really respect it, uh, Chad. Uh, I don't claim to know a lot about it. Matter of fact, the most I do know is actually from Nick, because I've had Nick on a few times and, and all that. But I appreciate what I see from it. I'm a huge fan of Nick fighting, um, taking it in there and fighting with it. I think that's just, um, I can't say enough about Nick. I just think he's, um, the, what he does, throws it just out there. That's why I love the guy. So based on that, I'm a fan of Kabbalah's because of Nick. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, you just made a few enemies, Dean. <laughs> Nick, yeah. Nick, Nick, you got to later, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, he knows I don't care. He can say what he wants. All right. So okay. Um, so all right, Matt. Personal. So what is the personal significance to you of this event? Like what you know, what does it mean to you? Like why is it why is it so important to you? So beat the crap out of cancer to me, um, you know, aside from another excuse to get to hit people which is, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. If we want to, uh, if we want to attack lupus in the summer, um, we want to say screw you to muscular dystrophy in the winter, we can do all those things. But um, the reality of it is that I've had cancer touch my life in a bunch of different ways. Um, whether it was, like I mentioned before, uh, Howie or, or my mom, or um, this year I lost a, a, a former coworker that was like a totally vibrant human being in the middle of last year and mm. it's just gone now um you know it's uh it's a tough thing you know to have this weird fickle finger of fate that might just drop on anybody at any time and yeah maybe you can treat it maybe you can't so um being able to put any kind of effort into you know providing some sort of help towards research or help to an individual person like we did this year. Uh, that's a big deal to me. Um, and uh, as I said before, I, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know someone that's directly affected by cancer. You know, one time or another, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. How about you? What's uh, your uh, personal significance for you? I mean, it's, it's similar to Matt. It's like you, everyone knows somebody that's been affected by cancer. And for the family and friends that have that I've had, um, I've had a couple of close close friend who just uh, had near brain cancer. They had to like open up his face to like remove a single cancer in his sinuses, and it was a whole. I mean, just the reconstructive surgery alone, going through that. And I'm like, you know, it's yeah, it's it's getting together for a day to raise some money, and also kind of being a a reminder. Uh, maybe take get a, a little bit better care of myself, drink less, eat a little healthier, just try to, you know, I mean, the body's a temple, maybe, maybe take care of it a little bit more uh, and kind of remind myself of why I do this, why I choose full contact weapons fighting. It's to protect my tribe against anything, any, you know, not just, you know, the overt physical threat, but, you know, now, now we're talking about, you know, getting dis diseases, especially with COVID, like the fall, um, about, you know, that can affect 
all of us, uh, any of us. So maybe take a little bit more time throughout your week, eat a little healthier, take a little bit care of your body. Um, and you know, just remember what's important, like why we're doing this. Amen. Yeah. Nick, same question. Um, early on, my grandmother was the first person I lost to lung cancer. Um, you know, uh, my father, he, he survived cancer. My mother this year just passed away from cancer. Grandmaster Angel Cabales was a victim of cancer. I mean, it, it really sucks. And I know, you know, just how painful it is to watch people deteriorate firsthand. Like, like I was in fifth grade when I saw my grandmother just go from the center light of my life to just barely open her eyes and oxygen, you know. Um, one of the things that I do um, is when I'll take donations or things like that is I'll put people's names on the stick in honor of them. This was awesome. my first one. I retired it. I got Angel. I got my father. I got Mr. T on there. That was for me. <laughs> but, like, this was my most recent one. So you can see the difference in my stick over the years. The beat yeah. is taking, you know. But for me, you know, somebody had said, they're like, oh, you're putting people's names on a stick and you're fighting with it. But I'm like... When I look down at that stick, I'm reminding myself why I'm here, what I'm raising money for. Um, I kind of refrained from it this year because my mother's loss was pretty fresh and I didn't want to like snap a gasket, you know, <laughs> like in, in, in my space where I shouldn't fight because uh, that's what happened in the Philippines. And, um, you know, at this point though, like it's, it's something that I know has touched my family and a lot of my friends and you know last year we did it for saint jude which was something that i, I always that's one of the few charities that i personally love to donate yeah. for but when when foxhound came to me about about Mika mcqueen and he explained everything you know and like i said having just watched my mother i was like yo dude we're all in let's do this you know and i th i thought it was great that like we were able to shift gears you know and and instead of giving to like a big company it was like, you know what? Here you go. So this guy here, he's struggling. I'm, I didn't even know who he was until until Matt told me. But see, but that's that's just the brotherhood right there. I was like, you know what? You fucking cool with Foxhound? I got your back then. If Matt feels that you're important enough to, to, to support, I'm not gonna question it. And I looked him up, and you know, I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I dig this, and I and I'm totally was on board with like what we were doing man so i think it's important that you know a lot of people just throw money at the problem but like for us all right yeah it's an excuse to fight but you know i think for us like to to do what we love in order to raise money and awareness that's that's really one of the great things about it man yeah i mean i you know again i, I wish i just knew about him sooner I, 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 perhaps i saw the part I, I don't know but you know about it now they, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I just want I'm FM, I'm putting FMA discussion behind this. Like all the money we get from the channel, we always donate to charity. Like I don't I don't I don't keep any of the money. So I want to start pegging this towards um, uh, beat the crap out of cancer as well. Um, you know, we get it like quarterly from the you know from the channel, and um, so I'm fully behind this um, on that. So uh, yes, you know, so how how do we spread this like you, you, you know what i mean like uh, I, I talked about you know fox connecticut i mean how, how does one go about i guess getting it going well i guess you know whether it's word of mouth or some sort of a, an aggressive uh campaign of spreading the word um so far, this has been kind of an insular thing within the Dog Brothers community and, and anyone who was like, so, um, you know, when when we were doing the East Coast thing out of Vermont um, or Vancouver, uh, anybody who was also connected to the gym that we happened to train in, you know, would show up or that seems to be how it went in New York this year or uh, it's actually how it went last year when we did it in uh northern massachusetts it's just that's usually how it goes so i don't know starting to kind of branch out and reach out to people slightly outside of our group uh filipino martial arts as some people may have experienced can be a bit of a contentious environment to try and uh interact with other no, groups no way weird <laughs> right? weird oh uh, i thought they um, were friends sing kumbaya <laughs> I did think that. 
I did. Just um, come after me. But, just ask me and I can make a question. <laughs> right. Um, one thing that I would encourage other people to do is to uh, put aside their egos and their, yeah. you know, tiny little, their tiny little worlds that they want to live in and, and be awesome in and fucking, you know, think about that and and step outside and, and get in there with people from other, uh, you know, other organizations. There's absolutely some gentlemen out there and uh, you, you know who you are. You know who you are, dude, who has a YouTube channel, um, who I would very much like to fight and continuously chooses not to do so. Uh, step outside of your, your comfort zone. Be a, a man, maybe I would call it, and, uh, and, and get into a, um, an, an event like this, uh, whether it's traveling to somewhere else. I mean, that's been my life. I don't have goddamn gatherings in Boston. I travel, uh, and, and I've been getting out of my comfort zone for a long time. Get out of your comfort zone, go to a place where this sort of thing is happening or choose to host one where you are, you know, play, play by the rules that have sort of dictated the situation up to now. And, uh, you know, whether, whether you don't want to be part of the, you know, however you feel guy who may or may not have a YouTube channel about how we do things at Dog Brothers Gathering, you can record at one of these. Um, and and do find it. out who this person is post-show. <laughs> you know, actually. So, we, yeah, we'll talk about off, off air. Uh, and, and you know what, man? Like, have one of these events. Um, whether you're a person who has only a couple of people around you that would want to stick fight, but you have some jujitsu players around or, you know, some Muay Thai guys around that you trust. Listen, the, the other side of it is despite, you know, my obvious antagonism, <clears throat> uh, that's not entirely what it's about. You, you, we're not looking to set up an event where anybody's getting their take their head taken off. So, you know, if you have a, a community around you of like-minded spirited people, whether it's stick fighting kickboxing grappling boxing knife fighting fucking tickle fighting if you're in some places i don't know it's it's about the experience of um testing your art and and testing it in a place where it's not going to actually be judged um and and when you're amongst people that are willing to um test their own art to the nth degree without having to have some sort of a, you know, an, an outside judgment on it. It's, it um, I, I think that that's the best way to, to have beat the crap out of cancer spread from what it is right now. Actually, that's, it's so fe feasible though, because um, I have a couple places. Basically, I would just get in contact with the person. I would get I think it's a tough state, um, not to get political as far as like FMA. <laughs> no, but um, I think if you just even ask, like we were, you know, we were looking for a place in New York and I just happened to know the guy who ran the place at it. And once I explained to him what we were doing, I was like, you know, hey, how much do you want for this? And, and this was Adam Kalari of uh, Legends Martial Arts and, and the prior. He was like, dude, if all your money's going to this, he goes, I don't want anything. Yeah, most people, if they Absolutely. knew the reason, and I have the feeling with these two people, I'm referencing that the user place. I think if they knew what was going towards, I, I don't see them charging me. But the thing is, so in other words, like I'm thinking future tense, like to get something, because um, I'm like, I'm really going to drive this. I'm talking like, I'm going to find a place like next week and get to try to get something for January. The only thing is like, where, where would my support come from? Like, would I, like Jeff, would you, Matt, Nick, you guys would come? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, what absolutely. Do I charge? Did somebody like, say stick fighting? Yeah. I'm going to stick fighting right now. Or is it donation? So that depends. Uh, there's been times, uh, events that I've gone to that have had a minimum donation. We didn't do that this year. We didn't do that last year. Um, but you absolutely can. Uh depending on the venue like you know we did it we did it outside in boston last year and so you know there was no overhead uh every mm -hmm. every penny of everything went directly yeah. to um 
you know, went directly to the cause uh, this year. You know, it was just insurance. And so, you know, okay, uh, okay. And that was a little out of pocket, so all uh for a couple of us but it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal yeah and then when it came to um you know events like uh in 2021 in la you know the minimum was you donate 50 bucks to uh kicking kids kicking cancer was the organization we did or you know you can kind of structure it however and and if it if it's a thing where it is going to um you know it's going to impact or be part of uh getting a getting a venue you know figure out okay the venue wants this much half of each person's donation goes to that you know whatever it is okay. um dude nice. that, I just think you work around. that was great i'm sorry your sister was selling the baked goods too yeah. oh yeah last year my sister and my mom made uh made a whole bunch of like Cupcakes and stuff. Okay. And they they made a bunch of money. Yeah, they, they made a couple hundred bucks selling cupcakes no to like wow. twenty five people. I don't even know how it happened. Your, your mom. There weren't, many, there, there weren't that many of us there. Box so, uh, dug, dug in on yeah. me. <laughs> I want to have to bring cannolis or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring some nice northern cannolis. Yeah. We'll have to uh, we'll have to bring go and and charge a mark up on. Hey, these are from the these are from the Bronx, man. You guys are. Paying. Dude, I tried to buy the icing, and Matt's mother's like, "No," and I was like, Come on. "She's like, no, Nick, you're not going to do that. You, no, what is wrong with you?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, Miss Barry." And I just got skulked off around the train. <laughs> so Matt, so let's say I get this place. All right, I know that, but you would like you would do the intro because I, I I'm not gonna really know what the hell I'm talking about. Though. Like you you gonna you would explain all this stuff. Like, yeah, sure. Or, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, oof, I've been through enough of these things uh, over the years. Wait, that I can ladies and gentlemen, mimic, Matt Barry. I can mimic I can mimic better than men than myself um, in explaining what's going on. Yeah, of course, and and that's what I very much uh, am am happy to do. It's you know. This is our, this is our, somebody tells me can't, I'll find a place though. When I get the term in, man, I, you know, um, like if I believe in something, man, I, 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 I try, I try to make it happen. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, um, for sure. And I'll, you know, but uh, so there. Uh, so what are you guys? Okay, so what would you, you know, I know you guys would like to see a spread, but uh, is there anything you guys would like to see improve in it? Like, you know more outsiders coming in more maybe weapon aspects or you know whatever you whatever you guys think nick what do you think what would you like to see as far as maybe um blood feuds evolution being settled. Hmm? <laughs> like that? With blood feuds being settled if, if that would be the one thing i'm almost remiss about dog brothers fighting is is and, and i appreciate it is that you have to be friends at the end of the match but there's like been a few people where i'm like you want a piece of me? You can find me here. You know, <laughs> and, I, and I want to break that cardinal rule, but I won't. You know, but I think I maybe, come though, right? I think maybe once in your dog brother career, you should have the ability to just fight somebody and definitely not be friends at the end of the match and just. <laughs> you have like been having that. social media drama with. Not, not I'm that. I'm gonna say it's more of a guideline. Bad feelings towards yeah, you. Yeah, there's a there's been a couple fights where I don't know if they were friends at the end of the day. <laughs> my, that's probably, really more of a guideline because yeah. uh, you know if if you know my origin story, it didn't start with a friendly situation. Um, it didn't even start with Filipino martial arts. To be honest, it just started <laughs> with a fight. And uh, <laughs> I you know. In in my I don't I, like uh, maybe like a hundred just over a hundred fights not two hundred I don't know one hundred and fifty ish dog brother fights yeah no there's a guy that can shove it up his ass still mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so yeah. it's it it exists it's just that fighting somebody generally irons it out mm -hmm. you don't have to be friends at the beginning of the day what's the rule it's not be friends at the beginning of the day it's be friends at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. right like stuff gets ironed out and and i strongly believe in that guy with the youtube channel can that um, be a biblical day that's the kind of thing that like yeah that's the end of the day it's not the beginning of the goddamn day 
And for, um, you know, these situations, I, I beat the crap out of cancer. We should probably have like a pretty cool thing going on with everybody at the beginning of the day. But at the end of the day, it's the same, it's the same rule. Like, you know, you, you, you got something to do, you got something to prove, you got something to say. Well, we have a certain, uh, you know, we have a certain event that, that allows that. And that's, I, I, it's better than fighting somebody in the street. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, yeah, 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 all the, yeah, all the yeah. suit, lawsuits and what have you. So, yeah. wow. Get it, get it handled, get it handled in the right place, especially if you're in the same world. And, you know, very, very few times um, have I looked back on uh, fights that I've seen and been like, oh, that was that was not cool like what was done or or like the way that it was handled in the end there's a couple you know um but i've seen a lot of them and it's just that's just the way it goes with conflict right like yeah. sometimes sometimes it doesn't get worked out and you have to have world war ii yeah um but uh for the most part it, things get worked out that way yeah um, but, you know when you go with these camp or these gatherings i mean um at the end though, everybody's like you're saying, there's occasional words. Um, guys within the organization don't get along, or generally speaking. Oh yeah, there's there's some people that will probably never. Sorry, cross you think there are people that will probably never cross sticks again? But um, they're still cordial with other around the gathering. But yeah, gotcha, gotcha. When you get hundreds of, I mean, there's I don't know, 250 full dog brothers or so stretched over 30 yeah. years. Do you think we all like each other? No, that makes sense. I didn't realize there we was two. I didn't we don't all like each other. Yeah. Like, for the most part. For the most part, we do. And and even the guys that don't like each other, um, you know, it tends to be fairly cordial. But, like, yeah, oh, I mean, no. Yeah. You can't. That's not going to work. Yeah. Not everybody. Not everybody's cool with each no, other. That makes sense. I didn't realize you guys had 200 plus. Hey, who's Wandering Dog? Who's that? Wandering Dog is Sean Zerger, who is one of – that is one of my big brothers, and Sean has taken great care of me over the years. He's one of the yeah, guys like that, yeah, from the good. from the jump for me, um, was a huge influence. Uh, if you've had a chance to fight him or train with him in multiple aspects of – you know, not just full contact safe fighting, but he's a, a phenomenal all-around martial artist. I I had nothing yeah. but good stuff to say about uh no Sean. no he had had him on a show a couple times we we talked about yeah. our training ki he's, he's one like, of the guys that i kind of looked up at when i was coming up he had either made yeah. a candidate when i was not even dog and i remember looking at him a couple other guys like that being like holy shit, i want to be as good as that guy someday type of thing he's very he was yeah. very he's a very skilled martial artist he's really good yeah phenomenal he's, told, he's told dog yeah. brother oh yeah, yeah sure. oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> no doubt on Sean Zerger not being a bulldog brother. <laughs> oh, not, not even a little bit. Uh, yeah. Not even a little bit. And, and he's somebody that he embodies all the aspects. You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. I would I would have a student that had been training with me for two weeks. Go fight Sean. Or I have a guy that was getting big for his britches. I'd go, yeah, okay, go fight Sean then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can you can say say it both ways to somebody with him just yep uh he's also um one of the there's a distinction within full dog brothers um is being a tri dog is somebody that's fought in a in an american gathering a canadian gathering and a european gathering and he's fought uh -huh. several several american gatherings uh several european most of the european gatherings and and in uh europe too um yeah that's a that's a distinction with within the organization that m many people do not have there's there's yeah. only a few of them um he's one of them there's a lot of buy dogs Jeez. but there's only a few try dogs Henry Jane, <laughs> i'd fight a certain guy hiding his real name in made up fantasy background i don't know who henry's referring to that's a lot of people I like that. I don't know Henry, but I like Henry. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I know that guy. Oh, is that? Yeah, that's Henry. 
Yeah, okay. Maybe I met Henry. So, All right. I like Henry it. goes, Romeo Bravo is bailing his fist right now. Yeah, yeah I'm not yeah, I don't know what Romeo's deal is, Henry. It's it, I'm actually it's kind of sad to be honest. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, all right. Um best thing, uh Robert's Robert is saying hello, and then we got uh Renee. Oh, okay. Renee, Renee is asking for a bee sting. Renee, you want a bee sting? Is yeah, that what you're saying? That's, that's what you're looking for? You want one? <laughs> that's a that's an event that is um yeah, Renee, I get along with everyone. Yeah, dude, <laughs> you, are the, you are the uh the Switzerland of Dog Brothers. Um <laughs> A bee sting is a very specific event that uh, that occurs usually for a group leader, a uh, guy who's you know been a dog brother for a while that has a has a crew under him, mm. um, where you fight multiple rounds. It's not not a set number of rounds. It's basically until you quit. Uh, one minute at a time against a fresh opponent every round, and that opponent comes in with whatever weapon set they want. Gotcha. Which gets sketchy real fast. I, and I, uh, I uh, Lonely probably has the record, I would assume. Uh, 15 fighters, one minute nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Renee is calling it right now, but he's saying Spain. So he's, 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 gonna be he's running. He's running from the Western Hemisphere. He's an, okay. <laughs> Jeez. running from the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> wow. Hey, we got Mike Carlito. Hey, Carlito. There's, a, there, there's an awesome guy there. Huh? Uh, so, all right, closing. Man, this has been awesome. Um, uh, Jeff, closing thoughts, man. What do you What do you want to see? Uh, closing thoughts on this episode, your journey. What do you want to see happen? Um, I just I, I was really happy to see, like I said, more uh, people coming out to do like MMA fights. Uh, people that are not Dog Brothers coming to these events because this is how it starts. So you, you know, you start with getting out of your comfort zone with one thing. Next thing you know, you're doing a light context knife fight, then maybe a light context stick fight, and you're increasing your you're getting people from outside to come in and and really realize what dog brothers is supposed to do i think we we maybe have a bad image about what we're, we're trying to do and trying to promote and i think beat the crap out of cancer is a much better intro to what we're trying what the dog brothers really means like even if you're never going to go to a gathering man show up to beat the crap at least you know work on a skill set out keep going because uh, that's what dog brothers is like matt and i we can spar each other all day but we're only going to get so much better if we go outside and spar people different tribes different systems you know same with like jujitsu jujitsu might go to a lot of people they only come in and roll with the same people week in week out they never compete they never roll outside their comfort zone i'm like well that's great but dude your jujitsu is only ever going to get so good that way you know it's never going to improve past a certain point you're going to plateau and that'll be it yeah, and it's yeah. the same thing with this. Like, I'd like to see people come out of their comfort zone a little. I'd love to see more jujitsu, MMA, judo, wrestling matches, uh, you know, come to beat the crap out of cancer. I'd love to have from my two gyms that I go to, people go to me like, hey, can we can we go to that? Is there, like, going to be some jujitsu or Muay Thai or MMA, MMA that we can just do? And I'll be like, yes. Yeah, let's go. Let's get a freaking road trip. We'll get a big freaking caravan come down to Connecticut or whatever, and we'll have more people with more skill sets. With that in mind, if like you know, like let's say it just you know the one in Connecticut, all you guys coming down, and some people, and um, it was just happened to be where numbers turned out really well. Is it feasible to do two rings or no? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, because I know you guys were timing them. I was just curious space. if it's feasible. Okay. Oh, space dictates. Yeah, no. If the space was there, I was more or less concerned if for audience perspective and timing and. Uh, like what have you? So okay. Yeah, you watch what you watch. What's interesting? That's true. Right, you're gonna go, you're gonna gravitate what you like. You know, Nick, what are you doing out, Nick? I, I, yeah, I'm here. I, I I mean, I'm really proud that of of my student Byron for jumping in. This is his second year. Um, I just want to keep seeing more of my guys just get involved into it. Um. You know, uh, I'm thankful, Matt, that you didn't let it fall to the wayside last year. 
you know, that was that was really awesome because as things kind of fell through in Vermont, Matt was like, fuck that, we're still having it. And you know, he he really pushed through and championed it. And you know, we got it in New York this year. Um, I just want to see more people come out and just and just again get out their comfort zones and, yeah. and see, you know, I what think it's gonna people, happen. Well, people think like you know, yeah. full full context stick fighting, you gotta be crazy, and yeah, okay, maybe you are, but <laughs> you know, it's it's the enlightenment aspect of it, and it's kind of like you know, it's like it's like a good book that you want to share with everybody. And it's like, mm-hmm. hey man, getting hit with a real stick is pretty awesome. Trust me, you know, jump in. <laughs> but no, I, I just want to see it just be, you know, positively promoted and keep going. Yeah, no, it's going to happen. I'm trying I like to help and support. Yeah, I'm, well, I just appreciate you guys would be willing to come to Connecticut to kind of kick it off. I Listen, know. you surprised the hell out of me when I go outside and all of a sudden I see you getting up the car. I'm like, Dean? I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad to say it's one of the best decisions I made for this year to, to cancel that class and come. You know, because I was kind of feeling guilty. Oh man, do I cancel? You know, I'm like, you know what, I man? Uh, I, I got to do this. I need this. So, Matt, same question for you. I mean, from this point on out, uh, I would like very much to, you know, like I said. I just want to fight, you know, anytime I can. But I, I would like to see something coming of it where we're able to spread, you know, whether it's spread the spirit of what we're doing. Um, it's really hard for some people because when they look at their martial arts experience, if they don't see a future in young male ritual, hierarchical combat styles, you know, um, there's no medal, there's no championship, and if there is, well, I'll never catch up to those guys. If you don't have an, a, if you don't have a place um, to to test out things in an environment where you're not worried about uh, some of those issues, like it's tough. And and actually, that's something that, to be completely honest, uh, the way that I sort of envision the beat the crap out of cancers that I'm involved in has a, a direct tie into Wandering Dog. This is a Sean Zerger thing because I've participated in his throwdowns um, mm-hmm. on, on a couple of occasions. And it it is it's essentially the same Dog Brothers rules, but with whatever you happen to bring. Um, and and that's sort of uh, that's sort of what I that's sort of what I gravitate to. Um, I like to I like competition. I've competed in jujitsu. I've done kickboxing and and um, whatever, and and I like that. But when it comes to weapons fighting, especially, I feel like uh, I don't like your stupid rule sets. I like to just have a fight, and uh, being able to have a fight in an environment where you're not worried about number one, you're not necessarily worried about the other guy killing you. Someone is going to stop things if it gets out of hand. But at the other end of that spectrum, there's a a real danger. We are, I'm trying to kill you right up until I'm not supposed to try and kill you. Um, so, you know, that, that environment is important and, and I really would like to help kind of spread it out amongst martial artists in general, whether it's Filipino martial arts or Muay Thai, uh, Jiu Jitsu, MMA, boxing, wrestling, whatever, where like you have a place where you can come and mix it up with people that aren't going to look like everybody from your school. One of the yeah. things that this past, one of the things that this past be the crap out of cancer that I was really excited about was I trained with Jeff and angry Scott <laughs> every, week. every week. Right. So I know what their setups look like. I know what their best move looks like. It's not going to work on me, vice versa. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and to watch their stuff work on other people and go, ha, that's working because it wasn't working on me. They had to refine it that much more. And yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. They have a setup, but now it doesn't look anything like this. Or, or maybe it does look like the setup that they've been using on me. But that guy doesn't know it. So there's this real, uh, this real benefit that I have gotten, especially recently, where we're in Boston starting to develop more of a fight team 
You know, there's there's a few of us that fight in, in gatherings and, and are going to be beat the crap out of cancer fighters and everything else. Watching um, other guys within the group have success has been very cool. And that's something that I really, you know, whether it's I, I started this solo, I was by myself for a while when I started my dog brother's journey. And even when, uh, you know, when I met Greg and he told me to take a hike until I knew something and, you know, when I met Pat and he was like, Oh, you're going to like find a gathering. I was like, yeah, dude, I already fought in one. Um, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have a, a very strong support system behind me when I began and, and um, being able to start to develop that for some other people is kind of neat. Uh, especially when we teach them like, Jeff and I taught Angry Scott something on like the <laughs> Sunday before the fight yeah. and he implemented it on Saturday at the fight and made it work. And we were like, yeah, yes, that's what we want, you know? So, you know, just, just the same way that Nick's student Byron has, uh, has shown promise and, and everything else. It's, you know, we, we're not here, um, so much to raise ourselves as to raise each other, raise our group, you know, um, as far as I see it anyway. No, 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 this is, yeah, definitely. Um, Rising tides raise all ships, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, real quick, Matt, I want to get you on commitment here. The next one for charity, can we sell stick baby shirts? Yes. <laughs> That's dark. But I like it. Nick and I almost killed a baby one time, and we're gonna make T-shirts about it. <laughs> stick, baby. Yeah. stick baby, you know, man. Maybe stick baby T-shirts will be uh, our um, our charitable line. There we go. Let's, uh, for an actual stick baby. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. <laughs> And each one is gonna have a little pink dragon on the on the arm. Um. <laughs> oh, the pink dragon. And it's, hey, it works. That technique, it's, it's mm -hmm. almost full. It's a good one. Inverse hockey jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure though. Yep. Let's yeah, let's make stick baby shirts and uh, and donate them. There we go. I like it. Hey, I'm gonna um here. You guys don't go anywhere because I I gotta know this person. That <laughs> I, can't, I can't I can't help myself. So, but yeah, I'm just gonna drop you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. But I want to say you guys did awesome, and I want to thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. Now, awesome. but here, but I'm just gonna put you down. But don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Mm. All right, folks, that wraps up episode 353. So what is going on in FMA discussion? Christmas raffle, 10 bucks. Um, there's some great prizes in there. Matter of fact, uh, Mark Denny donated a whole DVD set. Uh, Ray Floro donated something from KI, his library. Um, there's a, just a bunch of great stuff in there. 10 bucks, it all goes to charity. So great cause. And generally speaking, we always give to children's <clears throat> uh, charities. So again, with the holiday season coming around, 10 bucks a ticket, you could actually win something. We're going to do the drawing December 11th at 6 p.m. We run it right in FMA discussion. So again, 10 bucks a ticket, going for kids, all right? Um, quick bits. If you have an interest in doing that, two to eight minutes, anything you want. It could be on a tactic, technique. All you need to do is send in me Google Drive, send me a picture yourself. I post it on the channel. People can see what you do. And who knows? You might even get students out of it. You know, I mean, again, two to eight minutes, single theme, tactic, concept, drill. Uh, you just send it to me and I'll post it. They're going, they're hitting a home run and folks are getting good feedback on it. So that's something to think about and consider. And lastly, if you've not already subscribed to FMA discussion, please do so. All the money that we receive goes to charity. We do not keep any of it. So you, by signing up, are actually helping people, helping us to help people. And that wraps up. So folks, thank you for jumping in. We will see you next time.